in my absence. Mm. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Mm. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. It is God who works in us to will and to do. My God. Mm -hmm. It is God who works in us when I'm, I'm speaking on this. If I were in Ghana, in any of our churches, they would do a sign quickly. <laughs> to will. <laughs> Amen. Apostle Paul said, I was a wretched man. Why? Because the things I desire to do, I cannot do. The things I don't want to do are the things I find myself doing. He said, I have the willingness to do, but I'm not able to do. But it is God who works in us both to will and to do. Hallelujah. Are you there? Yes, we are. So, so God has a way of working in us and granting us the ability so that we don't only desire for a thing, but whatever we desire, He gives us the grace and the wisdom and the ability to perform. Beloved, if you have the willingness without the ability, you can never be successful. Okay. I repeat. Okay. If you have the willingness and you don't have the ability to, to, to make it a reality, you can never be a successful person. Amen. Amen. So let's go to okay, let's go to John fourteen. <coughs> so we we are all convinced that Jesus was a disciple of the Father. Yes. Are we okay? Yes. You know the Bible says God is love. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Guess what? Jesus is love. Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life. Mm. Come on. If God is love, Jesus is love. <laughs> he came to do exactly as the Father demanded. In other words, there was a blueprint he was following. Now let me say something here. In the same manner, the Holy Spirit <laughs> is not supposed to do his own will. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to John 14, verse 26. <laughs> the Bible says, But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Wait! The Father will send the Holy Spirit in whose name? In God's name. In Jesus', in Jesus name. <laughs> Are we together? Yes. And after the scripture, I'm going to come up with some four or five points that will amaze people. So the Holy Spirit came in whose name? Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Continue. We'll teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Mm. Peace I live with you. Mm. My peace I mm. give you. I mm. do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. 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 Go to John chapter 16. <coughs> we'll read from verse 13 <coughs> and 14. The Bible says, But when he the spirit of truth comes. Mm. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak Wait. only what? He will not speak on, on his, his own. own. Come on. Is he not similar to Jesus' way of speaking? Yes. Come on. Wow. King James says that he will not speak of himself. So continue. Re finish yours and I'll read King James. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. So, is the Holy Spirit going to be different from Jesus? Is it what Jesus said about himself? Mm. Is it not the same thing the Holy Ghost is coming to do? Mm. King James says that 
How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Read verse 14. Interesting. He will bring glory to me by taking... Hold it. He will bring glory to who? To Jesus. And Jesus will bring glory to who? To the Father. Mm. The Holy Spirit will bring glory to who? To Jesus. Uh -huh, read. He will bring glory to me mm. by taking from what is mine mm. and making it known to you. So, the Holy Spirit will take from Jesus and give to us. So you now see why, now watch this. You now see why Jesus, when he was on earth, he was the comforter. And the Holy Spirit was to be another comforter. Jesus, when he finished his earthly ministry, unlike the Father, finished on the seventh day, on the seventh day, he rested. But with Jesus, when he had finished with his earthly ministry, he ascended into heaven and he, he continued to do what? To intercede for us. How many understand? Mm. If Jesus is, is an intercessor, what does Romans 8, 26 to 28 tell us? Watch this. Jesus is an intercessor. And guess what the Holy Spirit is? <laughs> eight. Uh-huh. Us. 26. 26. 26 to 28. Six says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Mm. We do not know what we ought to pray for, mm. but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Mm -hmm. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, mm. because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. The Spirit does what? intercedes. So Jesus is interceding. The Spirit is what? Interceding. Wow. Are we together? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you now realize that I can say Jesus is the disciple of the Father. Mm -hmm. Then I can also say the Holy Spirit is a disciple of Jesus. Jesus. How many agree with me? <laughs> so what are we saying? What we are saying is the divine order of God, the kingdom, is for disciples. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to show us the way. And remember yesterday we established the fact that Jesus said, I will build my church. No argument, no dispute. My church. If it is his church, it must be done his way. Any other way will not be acceptable. And no wonder we read the scripture where he <laughs> where he denied some people who claimed they had preached in his name, they had worked miracles in his name, they had uh, cast out demons in his name and he said, get away from me King James will say, you were case of what? Iniquity. So Jesus admitted they worked because he called them what? Workers. The problem was they didn't do it his way. They did it their way. Or whoever way, whosoever way they did it, fine. But they didn't do it his way. And we read a scripture where God warned Moses, be careful that you do the tabernacle exactly the pattern I showed to you on the mount. Don't change any part of it. Why? Because every part of the tabernacle is a type. It's a type of our end time worship now that we are practicing today. Mm. Amen. Amen. You have the brazen altar at the gate. You have the labor of water. You have you enter the holy place. You have the table of showbread. You have the, the candlestick. And the candlestick, the table of showbread, you have the altar of incense, you have the veil, and then you have the holiest of holies with the ark of covenant. The Bible says in Revelation that the, 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 the prayer of the saints huh, is the incense that comes from the golden 
Go there and altar in the holy place in the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. And so in the holy place you have the candlestick which signifies the Holy Ghost. You have the table of showbread which is the word of God. And you have the altar of incense which is prayer. And the Bible says when Jesus before he died he gave out a loud cry. And guess what? And the veil got rent tall from the top to the bottom. What which means all the ministers, the priests who were, when the priests who were in the holy place on that day onwards could see the holiest of holies. On that day onwards, worship was open for them. On that day onwards, the presence of God was open for them. For once, they were permitted to behold the presence of God. Amen. Otherwise, it was only the high priest. And even though when he's entering, chain must be on his feet. In case he disobeys his side and dies, you still can go in so we can pull him out. But once the veil got torn, the priests who were, were at, at, at ministry on that day onwards, behold the very presence of God. Amen. Worship has been opened to all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is why we've been made a royal priesthood. As a matter of fact, only priests can touch the furnishings in the, in the holy place. In the tabernacle. Only priests. You don't touch any furniture. You don't touch any furniture or vessel. And that is why through Christ we've been made a royal priesthood so that Brother Allen can play the keyboard. Otherwise, he has no right to come here. These are vessels of the Lord. Amen. Only priests can touch it. Wow. Today we are of the priesthood. Amen. So we can render service in the house of God. Amen. 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 Why has God made his order that his kingdom is for disciples? Because we have lived a life before being born again. Now listen carefully. When we've got into it serious. We have lived a life before we are born again. And so the need for translation or transformation cannot be overemphasized. Amen? Amen. The old nature cannot be part of his kingdom. Cannot survive in his kingdom. And that is why we must be born of the spirit and of water to get into the kingdom. And the Bible says there are three that bear record in heaven, 1 John 5, 7. That the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Then verse 8 says, but there are three that bear witness here on earth. This time no Father, this time no Word. The Spirit, <laughs> water, and blood. And guess what? And we come from behind. The blood gives us access <laughs> into salvation. Then once I am saved, I must become a child of God. Then I must be born of the Spirit to enter. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, it cannot be any way than discipleship. Why? Discipleship is the process whereby God transforms us into the kingdom. Are we together? Yes. So guess what? Jesus was a disciple of the Father and Jesus made disciples. And when his time was due, he charged his disciples to make disciples. And guess what? His disciples, did they do it? Yes. Did they obey his command? Yes. Right after the day of Pentecost, what do we see? Chapter 2 of Acts, verse 41 through 43. Immediately, those who believed the gospel and gave their lives to the Lord, immediately were gathered and they started their discipleship. Amen? Amen. Are we together? Yes. Why? Because you cannot be in that kingdom with the flesh. It is not possible. And if you find yourself in the kingdom and you don't get discipled, you become a monster. And that is what the Bible calls the carnal. We, have, we are the spiritual people, we are the carnal people, we are the people of flesh. 
Those are the people who God Bible calls them carnal. They know the Lord. They know his word, but they don't live it. Mm -hmm. You know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 1? Getting to the end of Romans chapter 1. It says, those who have the truth or who does not, who do not hold the truth in righteousness. Oh, yeah. Those who do not hold the truth in what? Righteousness. And that has to do especially with ministers. He's giving us his word. He's giving us his unction. He's giving us his anointing. If we don't hold it in righteousness, you know the danger. The danger is, what this? The danger is we will pour out poison to his people. Apostle Paul said there is ministration of death. Hey. If there is ministration of death, then there is ministration of life. And you agree with me. It is not every ministration that brings life and gives life. There's a ministration that gives death. <coughs> I have heard many men, I have heard this preaching several times. It's not wrong to drink. There's not, the Bible doesn't, doesn't speak against drinking. And then, and, and then it's about getting, getting drunk is a problem. Is that, hey, hold it there. Hold it there. Proverbs 30, verse 4 will tell you, Oh, live well. It is not right for kings. <laughs> it is not right for kings to drink strong drink. Because <laughs> subsequently, they will not be able to judge right and to lead the people rightly. Why? Because of the influence of alcohol. Who are the kings? You and I. Yes. Come on, man. You and I, are we together? Yes. Revelation 1, 9 and 10, Revelation uh, 10, 5 and 6, the Bible says that he has made us to be kings and priests. So you and I are the kings and queens. So it is not proper for us to get drunk. It is not proper for us to be drinking strong drink. Why? Because lives will depend on us. The Bible did not say creation is waiting for the excuses of the sons of God. No. It didn't say creation is waiting for the explanations of the sons of God. It said creation is waiting for what? The manifestation of the sons of God. Creation is not ready to, for, for you to explain stuff. Creation is expecting you to bring them deliverance. Creation is expecting you to bring them hope. Creation is expecting you to bring them healing. So we can say Jesus was a disciple of the Father and the Holy Spirit is a disciple of Jesus. Jesus. Where does it feel? Amen. And Jesus made disciples. And he charged the disciples to make what? Disciples. <laughs> because of time. Let's look at one more point and then we do our discussion quickly. Today I want us to do some little discussion. Some 10 minute discussion. <laughs> Why is God particular about, about, about discipleship? Because the Bible talks about the renewing of our minds. <laughs> Jesus said to the Nicodemus, What is born, that which is born of the spirit is spirit, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. In other words, that which is born of the spirit will desire for spiritual things, and that which is born of the flesh will desire for what? Things of the flesh. So when you meet a believer, supposed believer, and he doesn't, he doesn't desire the thing of the spirit, and everything flesh, 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 and can even fight you for talking spiritual things and things, right against you, stop being bothered, stop condemning them. The answer is simple, he is not yet mm. one of the spirit. <coughs> He is not yet. It has nothing to do with how long he's been in the church. He is not yet born of the Spirit. I discovered something. When babies are born, where are the mothers? A very smart baby. As a matter of fact, you don't show the baby where the breast is. After a few days. The moment you lift, I can't, this God is something. Lift the baby up and the baby is struggling for the thing. Mm. 
Guess what? Let a mother give the baby to you. The baby will know. The baby will know she is not with the mother. Amen? Amen. Why the transformation? Because yesterday we mentioned Colossians 1.13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Because the prison uniform cannot enter the kingdom. What is the prison uniform? The old nature. What is the prison uniform? That nature, listen, that nature will not survive there. Something must be done about the old nature. Hence, discipleship. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. I'll stop there for today and let's do that discussion. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. The Bible says, But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them just as he wanted them to be. Wait, every one of them. Not some, not few, but what? Every one of them. Now watch this. The importance of discipleship is the fact that every one of them will be placed somewhere in the body. Mm -hmm. okay. Now let's do some sciences here now. Every organ in your body from the day you were born has been functioning till today. Mm. As a matter of fact, in the body, malfunctioning is not allowed. Sure. Because malfunctioning is still a problem. I don't understand what I'm saying. Mm. When an organ is not functioning well, it is still a problem. And we say that other organs will quickly rally themselves to check what they can do about the situation. And that is why today we are saying that COVID have more effect on the, the aged than the younger. Why? Because of their immune system. Are we together? Yes. And especially if they have underlying issues of, of health. Now, so the body has organs. And all the organs must function for a healthy body. Now, if any of the organs, watch this, if any of the organs should stop functioning, and doesn't function over a period of time will become toxic. Mm. Toxic means poisonous. It becomes poisonous to the other parts of the body, other. <laughs> and so every one of them, every one of us will be fixed on the body. And if we're going to be fitted into the body, then when we are fitted, we must function. Now, how do you function when you know nothing? How do you function when you know nothing? And so eventually, I have been placed somewhere around uh, 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 the oracle or the ventricle. That didn't mean for the terms. <laughs> the oracle and the ventricle are connected to the heart. Now, supposing I'm, I'm the oracle or ventricle and here I am, I cannot function. Guess what? The heart will suffer. Every part of the body will suffer. And I am saying that God is particular about discipleship because otherwise we will raise damage to the body. So if I am fitted into the body and I have no clue of anything, then I become hazardous to the body. Then I become dangerous to the body. On this point, is discipleship important? So right after the message, and right after they accepted Jesus, and they became saved, discipleship began. The early church did not downplay discipleship. For them to downplay discipleship means they have disobeyed their, their, their master. They themselves were disciples. And so they were given the mandate to what? To disciple. Only a disciple 
as a mandate to disciple. If I am not discipled, I cannot disciple you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is discipleship important? So if people are not, that, 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 listen, the process of discipleship simply means to know the Lord. Come on. Know the Lord. <laughs> know the life of the kingdom. And make you live the life of the kingdom. By the time you should be through discipleship, it is no longer what somebody said. Now it is, I know him. Oh my God. And he knows me. In the absence of discipleship, then it's like I am just in church. Yesterday I said something. Except discipled, you can be used of the devil. Tomorrow we'll go deeper into something that will, that will explain why the church looks the way it looks now. Nobody. Because according to my Bible, no one filled of the Holy Ghost can sit and look on evil and allow it. <laughs> the Bible says that the Spirit of God, listen, the Spirit of God will provoke you. You are led by the Spirit. How would you sit with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, and condone and connive with evil? Does it mean the Holy Spirit they had that time is different from the Holy Spirit we are dealing with? Then why are we the way we are? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives. Even I that, I can, can, can you be sure to say that of the church today? Are you sure we have ministers who don't mind dying now? I bet to defy we might. But not until a man is fully a disciple of Christ. It means I don't have a will. Come on, man. I don't have a will. I don't live for myself. I don't have a life. So Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I love it. Read Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. The life I now live. In other words, I have lived a, a certain particular life before. But the life I now live. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I no longer live. In other words, say, I don't have a life. Christ lives in me. How? By the Holy Spirit. Now you understand why the Bible says that they that are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. Jesus was not exempted. Check the Bible. After his baptism, and after the heavens opened and the proclamation was made over him in Matthew chapter 3 verse 17 the next verse was chapter 4 verse 1 this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased the next verse and the spirit led him into the wilderness are we together? in other words he obeyed the spirit and if those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God, then Jesus was a son of God. Amen. So for those who are not led by the Spirit of God, what are they? <laughs> it is not just being a like being church, no. When we now have disciples of Christ who do not have a life of their own, who are led by the Spirit of God, then we will not condone with evil. Then where we are, evil can have no space. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Tomorrow we're going to look at who the anointing is meant for. And we're going to look at the waste of anointing. The wastage of the anointing. Finish it, what you are reading. I am crucified with Christ. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The life I now live, the, 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 the King James said, the life I now live in this body is not me. In other words, I am led. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Are we together? Amen. If the disciple can become like the master, then what Jesus said will be fulfilled. Because it was fulfilled in his disciples. And it was fulfilled in the disciples the apostles made. Jesus said, the works I have done, those who believe in me, they will also do. And they will do greater. Now watch me. If, 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 if Apostle Peter in the morning was going to buy chapati, if they hear that Apostle Peter is, is sleeping here tonight, by dawn 3, 4 a.m., they have lined up the sick, hoping that he will pass by. And true to their faith, as he passes by, they wake up and go home. Uh, Did Jesus do that? No. The records we have, we have in the Bible, Jesus didn't do that one. So what Jesus said was fulfilled. Mm. They did the works he did, and they did greater. Mm. Come on, man. Yeah. Apostle Paul will be preaching like I'm, pre I'm teaching here, and there's a, an issue somewhere at Machakos or at where? Where? <laughs> oh, I want someone key. <laughs> yeah, okay. And 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 he's 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 occupied. So it says, okay, if that is the case, oh Lord help us. If that is the case, guys, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release power into this handkerchief. Take it. And they pick the handkerchief. Go. Bam pa. Bam pa. Bam pa. What are we talking about? <laughs> is it the same spirit we are dealing with today? Uh, no. Or it's another spirit? <laughs> Let me tell you something that will shock you. I was once caught in a jam. <laughs> and where I was driving to would be about a one hour drive. And I have only 15 minutes left. 15 or between 15 and 20 minutes. I was, let me use the word confused. Then I heard the word, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then I entered the petrol filling station, packed and prayed. I said, if it is so, Lord, take me to the place and then Lord, don't let me be late. I didn't see myself over speeding. I didn't see myself doing anything. Guess what? I got there. It was I went with two of my sons. It was one of them who drew my attention to the fact that, Papa, something has happened. I said, what? Are you aware we are here before the time? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I believe God for anything. Yes. The spirit in the time of the apostles has not changed. Amen. Our problem today is we are not meeting the condition. I have a dream. How many want to know the dream? I have a dream yes. for the body of Christ. My dream is that if Peter could stand and say, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? And something happened. Why is it that today, the liar, the thief, the, uh, the 419, everything, uh, are all in church. As a matter of fact, we are doing it in church. Where is the Holy Ghost? Mm. And that note. <laughs> so the discipleship is our process of <coughs> transformation so that we can live the life like Christ. Mm. Without discipleship, you can never become like Him. And guess what? If you are not a disciple, then you can't be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. I'm not agree with me. The word Christian means Christ-like. So if you are not a disciple, you are not a Christian. I've started working on a book on that. I know it will, it will bring chaos. If you know you are not that, you are not, you can never be a Christian. You are not. Because Christian means Christ-like. Who are those who were Christ-like? His disciples. Come on, man. <clears throat> and those that were called Christians were not apostles. Watch this. Those that were called Christians were not the apostles. Because at that time, only two, of, two or three of them were there. Mm. 
So the bunch number of them were not the apostles. We prove that Jesus made disciples, his disciples made disciples, and the disciples made disciples. Are we together? Amen. Today, has God changed the order? No. Is there another way that we can be conformed to the image of his son? No. The only way is by what? Discipleship. Without discipleship, no transformation. Without transformation, guess what we are doing? We are putting a jacket over the old nature. Amen. Is discipleship important? Yes. Can you imagine if discipleship was serious in the body of Christ? What would the church look like? Wow. Go think about it. And I pray that victory they will become an example. Amen. Whatever you are, when you come to victory, you will go through discipleship in Jesus' name. Amen. The only difference will be that if you're already a mature believer, when you go through it, we, we will see, we will know. Then you are jumped. So within a month or two, you are out of it. Are we together? Yes. But you must go through. Let me say something that will shock you. If you stop our church, even if you have a pastor, and you stop our church, you go out for two, three years, and you come back. Sorry, you go through. I don't know what you've gone to do. I don't know where you have been. Hey, I, 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 I was come your life. Because who, who knows what you have come with? Amen? Amen. Is discipleship important? Yes. Should we be serious about discipleship or we can live it. Yes. Amen? Amen? The disciple will be like Christ. The non-disciple cannot be like Christ. So if he cannot be like Christ, then let me submit to you, the devil can use him. And some are able to wave their way through to the top. And they've never been discipled. What do you expect? Let me say something today. A church can be controlled by Satan. Mm -hmm. I'll repeat it. And if you ask me, I can prove my mark from my Bible. I can give you no less than 30 scriptures or more. A church can be controlled by Satan. How? If an agent of Satan takes the seat, mm -hmm. then Satan will control. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Let me say here, whatever controls your mind, controls you. <laughs> because there is no act without a thought. There will be a thought before what? An act. So whatever controls your mind, will control you. Tonight, my prayer. Victory. And may victory be a point of contact to reach the churches of God. Amen. May God bring to the realization of ministers my divine way is discipleship. Nothing more, nothing less. Take it or leave it, discipleship. Because if the people are not discipled, they're going to create damage to my body. And that's the damage we have in the kingdom and in the churches today. Discipleship. Are we ready for it? Yes. Who is willing to be discipled? Wow. And let me tell you something. When you are discipled, watch this. If I'm discipled by Pastor Cosmos, watch this. By the time I, uh, I get the things I need to know, you will start manifesting the grace upon your life. And you know the good thing? Because he, watch this, because he mentored me, my own gifting and grace will show. And the things he taught me will show. And so I've gotten more than I would have, I would have kept without being mentored. Are we together? Mm. Okay. And it is when I've been disciple, then I can live a life like Christ. Then I can live in righteousness that enemy cannot touch me. Oh. Without which, you'll be a means meat. Mm -hmm. And so that is why there are believers every day in trouble A. They get out of it trouble B. They can't, they can't take care of themselves spiritually. 
It is time for discipleship. When you are discipled, you grow. That's the word. When you are, you are discipled, you mature. When you, look, Apostle Paul said, I've given you milk for some time. And I thought by now, come on, I thought by now I could give you meat. But I now realize you, you can still, you cannot take what? Meat. May you not spend 15 years in church and remain a baby in the Lord. May we give ourselves to discipleship. Then we will grow thereby. Hey, there are things for toddlers. And there are things for the mature. Amen. There are things you can give to children. There are those things you cannot give to adults. Let's grow. And we can receive things meant for adults in the kingdom. Amen. There are some things God will never give to somebody who is not grown in the kingdom. We can desire for it. That's what we are desiring. We are not getting it is not that God doesn't hear prayer and doesn't answer prayer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. There are things for children and there are things for the mature. May we give ourselves to discipleship, to grow thereby. And as we grow, we can receive things Amen. that are meant for adults and for the mature. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Any question or contribution?